So Victory Farms it, uh, started last year during the pandemic. Um, I own a little restaurant in town called The Grange and we couldn't get open because of the pandemic and I was feeling frustrated that I wasn't doing anything to help, um, you know, in any way. And I, I read a story in the New York Times about a group of people up in um, Rhode Island who put each put gardens in their backyards and then uh, sort of collectively farmed. Um, they, each, they each raised stuff. They sort of, they used it as a way to see each other, you know, wave to each other outside. Or sometimes kids from one house would go to another house and they would garden six feet apart. And so I thought, oh, we could do something like that. So I sent an email to about 70 families and I think 45 or 46 said yes. And we started just raising stuff. And a lot of people had never done it before. Some people were really expert. Um, uh, we got a late start, at, but in mid June, people started producing cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, jalapeno peppers, a lot of jalapeno peppers. Um, and they would bring them over to the Grange, the shop that wasn't open yet, but we had the space and I would store them and then take them over to the food pantry the next day and they would put them in bags. So this year I decided to do it again. I'm up to about a hundred participants right now. Um, individuals, um, Larchmont, uh, public library and uh, Saint, a couple of the churches, um, Sheldrake want to participate. And so we're just, yeah, the more the more the better. And we're going to grow as much food as we can for the Larchmont um, Ameriknick Hunger Task Force. Would love it if, if it just got bigger and bigger, you know, and people did this. Because one of the things I learned last year that I didn't realize is that, that food insecurity or hunger is a big problem and it's a big problem in Westchester. And, um, you know, I think that a lot of people felt great about, I mean, they, they grew food for themselves and their families and they loved it, but I think they felt a real sense of purpose and doing something that was helping other people. It, 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 I, it probably gave them even more incentive to keep going. So, you know, it's, it's a nice idea to think about people helping their neighbors, right. And, um, it not being so, um, I mean, it's wonderful when a grocery store um, or some of these uh, these foods delivery service companies do donate food, and they do. You know, they do a lot donate. Um, but it's just a, uh, it's a little, it's one step further removed, right? You know, it's it's um, great when you can do something personal to benefit somebody personally. So if you go to grangelarchmont.com and click on Victory Farms, the tab Victory Farms, everybody can see, um, read about it. And there's a link to a Google sheet where you can sign up. And that's that's my mailing list. And every week I send an email to everybody saying, okay, this week we're gonna talk about where you can get raised beds. And next week we're gonna talk about trellises. And then the week after that, we're gonna talk about fence thing. You know? So I try to keep it to one email a week. Um, with like uh, news you can use and um, and yeah so that's a great place to sign up and I'm here to uh, my email is there and I'm here to answer questions and take a look at your yard and tell you where if, if you don't know like where you might where might be the best place to put a garden so I'm here, I'm here to help. Each spring, the United States House of Representatives hosts a National Congressional Art Competition, otherwise known as the Artistic Discovery Contest. This year, Jamal Bowman of New York's 16th Congressional District will be hosting the event for high school students grades 9 through 12. The winning student will have their work displayed in the U.S. Capitol for 11 months and may have the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. for an art reception in the Capitol building. Shown here are the parameters for submissions. This year, all submissions will be electronic. For more information on how to submit a piece and contact information for any questions, visit bowman.house.gov. For the last 38 years, Steve Altieri has dedicated his time to serving his community as town administrator. As I get towards the end of the, you know, it's a public service is a wonderful profession and I've had the good fortune of not only 
doing something that I love, but doing it with a staff and with supervisors and board members that have just been terrific. And it's just been a wonderful community to work for. Although his time with us has come to an end, Steve assures us that he has no intentions of abandoning the community just yet. I already serve on uh, two boards that I'm going to continue to serve on, and they are both public service related type boards. Um, one having to do with workers' compensation insurance and the other having to do with the Westchester Municipal Officials Association. And then there, there are some projects uh, that I will work on with some other communities, hopefully, to, uh, uh, to help them out where they don't necessarily have a manager or administrator. Looking back, Steve is proud that he was able to witness several projects and innovations while serving in his capacity. But if I look over the years, there have been just some wonderful projects. And if you think about the fact that the town of Ameranek in the early 90s was one of the very first communities to directly involve itself in the construction of public housing, the Homics Park Apartments, that was a terrific project. In the late 80s, we rebuilt the Homics Ice Rink after deciding whether to close the rink or rebuild it. We decided to rebuild it and the community just you know, glommed right onto that project. His passion for the community will always be present, but Steve assures us that being absent from his office will now give him more time with his family, a very important component amidst the year that brought the world into a state of crisis and international somber. I can't go, I can't go cold turkey, so we're gonna have to find a couple of things to do. And, and also I get to spend more time with my, I have two relatively young grandchildren, <clears throat> three and two, so I'm gonna spend some more time with them <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, spend some more time with my wife. For the moment, the town of Ameranek does not know who the new administrator will be. But Steve tells us that they have been working strategically to recruit someone who will fill his shoes. Town board and the supervisor are currently working with a headhunter that was retained to work on the recruitment. So I would think the process ends somewhere around the end of May, early part of June. And in that interim period, uh, although I, I'm unofficially leaving at the end of uh, March, I am going to provide assistance to the town, uh, you know, on some projects and to help the deputy town administrator step up uh, to take over the operation of the town while I'm away. Steve may physically be leaving his post, but the town of Mamaronik will continue to see him operating as a valued member of the community who is always looking to engage in public service. It's, uh, it's sort of a, a mixed bag of emotion, but uh, hopefully I'm going to keep my toes in public service a little bit as uh, I look at other ventures and we'll, you know, we'll find other things to do um, in my next life, so to speak. March 22nd through March 26th is Teacher Trivia Competition Week at MHS. Teams of teachers will be competing against each other over Zoom at lunch. 11.15 is the first game and 11.30 is the second each day. The Zoom information is available through the website trivia.mamkstu.co. Miller with the three-pointer, hits the iron. Was it ever in doubt that Randall would not get the rebound? McIntyre advances, plays to Randall. Randall with a three-point effort, and it's good. That moonshot is definitely getting uh, the cheerleaders here happy. Smith charging at Randall, swatted. And now for this week's COVID updates. According to westchestergov.com and the Westchester County COVID-19 dashboard, COVID numbers have been on a steady streak this week. In Larchmont, there are still a recorded 15 cases, and in Mamaroneck Village, there are a recorded 105. As for the vaccine, around 122,000 doses have been administered across New York State in the past 24 hours, and over a million doses in the past week. Governor Cuomo has mentioned that New York State's weekly vaccine allocation has been increasing over time and that we are getting shots into arms as quickly as possible.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Silver Lining. So today I'm going to be talking about college, more specifically the college search. I'm 16, I'm a junior, so I've been going on a lot of college tours recently. And something I noticed about these college tours is that they'll often ask you questions to make sure you like their school which is understandable, but some of the questions are really weird. Like, a common question I get is, what other schools are you looking at? Which I think is really bizarre. That's kind of like going on a date and saying, hey, who else did you match with on Tinder? 